I'm here from JetBlue, and I'm curious to know how many of you have flown JetBlue? Nice! A lot of you. How many of you flew JetBlue here today? Okay, a few of you. And how many of you have ever tweeted at JetBlue? Nice, good. So that's how we're off to a good start. A few of you have engaged with my team. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what, um, what we do as a team. I manage, um, as Nick said, I manage the social media team and also our customer commitment team. And I work very closely with also our marketing team and our corporate communications. So together, we have about three social media managers at JetBlue, and I'm one of them. So a little bit about our history. Uh, JetBlue is a relatively new airline. We've been around for 14 years. We were founded on the premise of bringing humanity back to air travel. And today, that goal has been reduced to two words, and it's inspiring humanity. That's what we do. That's our goal. It's all about people. Everything at JetBlue, it's all about the humanity and about the people. So that's our goal. And being on social media was just a natural extension of that. It was no different than what we're doing in any other, any other part of the airline. So air travel is complicated, right? Some of you probably know that more than others. Uh, Matt Nell, are you here? <laughs> I know you had some fun last night getting here on JetBlue. <laughs> 2.30 arrival time. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's complicated. It's not always fun. The airlines are trying to make it fun, but we're in a really difficult industry. Um, we have a lot of, we're very regulated. I mean, it's been said that airlines are the most regulated, unregulated industry out there. And it's true. And there are a lot of moving pieces, literally, and things that have to come together. But it was a natural move for us to start doing customer service on Twitter. Our customers that were there, they were talking to us. They were talking to us when they had flight delays. We were there to respond and hopefully give them some helpful information. So we, even though we're doing customer service, we don't really look at what we're doing there as just transactions. We know that it's important to measure things. We know that, obviously, everybody wants to claim an ROI for their social media efforts. And we know that, that metrics are definitely important, and there are things that we're absolutely measuring. But one of the things that we make kind of a point of not measuring is our response rate. So that might sound kind of counterintuitive because I'm here to talk about engagement, and engagement is really important to us, but we want it to be organic and we want it to be natural. So we talk, about, we talk a lot about engaging smartly. We look for opportunities that will really add value and really help our customers out, rather than just responding to maybe every ad mention that comes our way. It's all about really doing the right thing and really connecting with our customers. So we have a lot of customers that um, they've flown with us, they have an experience, they might tweet us, and then sometimes they even blog about us. So there's one customer, her name was Jennifer, and she flew on JetBlue, and then she wrote a really super nice blog post about us. And there was a part of her blog post that really resonated with me. And the part that I really liked, screen clipping here, was that she talked about uh, engaging with JetBlue on Twitter, and she really liked that engagement. But she also goes on to say that she had also talked to our flight attendants and that she had talked to our pilot. And I really like that because it sums it all up, that it's all about our people. It wasn't just the online experience. It was also the in-person experience that impressed her. And really, that's the whole thing. It's, it's all of us together. It's all of the JetBlue crew members. That's what we call our... All of our employees are crew members, not just the people that work the flights. So all of the crew members together are making this single experience for our customers. And we want our customers to have the same experience at any touch point in their journey as they would with us on social. Social isn't just the only place where you can get an amazing customer service experience. It should be anywhere. So obviously, we have um, set our, buy, our bar kind of high for customer service. Um, we do pride ourselves on the fact that we've had 10 consecutive uh, J.D. Power and Associate Awards for highest satisfaction in air, uh, airlines. I also noticed that the Omni had a few of these awards at their check-in desk, so that's awesome. Um, so we've set the bar pretty high. We are known for customer service. I mean, we've been, we have called ourselves a customer service company that just happens to fly planes, because really it's all about the customers. Um, we also have a pretty large following. Right now on Twitter, we have 1.8 million followers. Um, so we have a lot of people that, we, that we're talking to. We get about 15 to 1,600 at mentions of JetBlue every day. 
And on top of that, there's another one, about 1,000 every day of just general mentions of our brand. So it's about 25, 2,600 um, mentions every day that we're monitoring, and we do that monitoring very manually. We actually have people that are working 24-7 and reading everything that comes in and deciding what to respond to. Um, in addition to that, we get about 100 um, Facebook comments a day. But our response rate, um, or our response time, we're averaging about a 10-minute response time to anything we respond to. And what's really interesting about this, though, and I mentioned metrics and what we measure, is that our response rate is generally about 15%. So we're responding to about 15% of what comes in. What I find really interesting about that is that it's pretty consistent, but that is not a metric that we focus on. There's no goal to get a 15% response rate. We haven't shared that with the team. They actually don't even know what their response rate is because we want that to be truly organic. The engagement we have with our customers really should happen naturally, and it should happen as part of their, as part of their experience and as people talking to people. So how it all happens is through these guys. This is, these are some of my team members. And to tell you a little bit about the social media team at JetBlue, um, I did say that uh, we have three social media managers in three different departments. We've got the marketing side, the corporate communications side, and I'm the one from customer support. But in addition to that, I have 25 crew members on my team that make up the social media team. So our, our team of 25, they're all home-based agents. They work out of their homes. We're based in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, there's a wide range of people and a whole variety of personalities and interests and expertise. Uh, we have some millennials on the team. We have some people who are actually baby boomers on the team and everything in between, Gen X, Gen Y, whatever all the other generations were that came between. Um, the millennials and the baby boomers. But these are people that um, have a, a very wide range of skills, a wide range of passions, and some of them are very active on their own personal social media channels. Others, they hardly ever post anything. But the reason we hired them for this team is because of their passion. We looked for people who absolutely loved our brand already, who were already big fans of JetBlue, understood our mission, loved our customers, and wanted to be involved in this. The social part of it, and the actual engagement, we can teach that. We can teach those skills, but we can't teach them how to care, and we can't teach them to love what they're doing. So it's really the magic happens with the team. But the roots of our team goes back about four years. So the way we started out in, it was probably in about 2009 when we started doing social media really earnestly, um, generating more engagement with our customers, realizing that a lot of customers were talking to us on Twitter, this is about the time when they started asking us customer support questions. And there were four of us at that time in 2009 that started to, um, to respond back to our customers and really started to build some relationships. So you can see, some of you actually might know Morgan Johnston. Um, he's the one in the blue shirt in the very middle of this picture. And on his sides, there's uh, Gigi and, and me, and then also Lindsay. And there were four of us from the year 2009 to 2010. There were just four of us. We were looking at Twitter every day. We were kind of the social media people doing that on top of our regular jobs. Um, and what we were building and what we saw happening was amazing. We suddenly had relationships. We had people that, that we felt like we knew personally and that, that knew us personally. We were talking to them. Um, we were having a lot of fun. Uh, it was a very open and collaborative experience. Back in those days, we actually used Google Wave. If any of you remember Google Wave, <laughs> we might have been the only people using it because <laughs> Google killed it not long after. But we used that to keep in touch, and it was, it was a really good time. But we also realized that what was happening, the more we engaged, the more people were engaging with us. And we knew we had to scale this. But the question was, how do we scale it? And how do we, how do we get a, a larger group of people to care as much as we do? And who, how do we keep this open, collaborative environment and this dialogue that we've had with only four of us, how do we do that with a bigger team? So we decided that we really wouldn't change anything. We'd do the same thing we were doing. We would just find more people to do it with us. So we put out a job posting, and it was only an internal posting. We only hired people for the team that were already trained customer service agents at JetBlue. But they weren't all people that were reservations. They might have been people from our True Blue desk, and True Blue is our loyalty program or people from Crew Support, which is another support team. So we wanted a good blend of people, backgrounds, and experiences, and then we trained them. And the training we had wasn't all about social. It was also really about the foundation of JetBlue, about our, our operations, about what, what does it take to create route schedules and have planes fly. We also talked a lot about 
um, having PR skills, because anybody who's on social needs to have at least some good sense of PR. The social media team, they're really like the canaries in the coal mine. They're the people that will have the first alert of something might be happening, something might be wrong, and they need to have enough sense to know when to pass that back internally. So we really needed to teach them to look at things through not only a customer support lens, but also a PR lens. And we also wanted to really help them become familiar with our our marketing initiatives so that they could support that. Because social, as you know, it's a lot more than just the marketing. It's also carrying on what we've developed on the marketing side and really building that relationship with our customers. So the result of all of this and, and of having the team is that we have a wide variety of responses coming out from the at JetBlue Twitter handle. Um, what you'll see here is that not for, none of this that's on the screen right now was decided in a conference room. It didn't have to get a lot of approvals. This is true organic content that's happening in real time. We've empowered the team to decide what needs a response, what tweets need a response, what value they can add, and to put their own spin on it. So in the, in the top example, you can see that there is a hashtag on the house. If you've flown JetBlue, you know that we offer a wide variety of snacks free of charge. And every once in a while, our customers, maybe somebody who hasn't flown JetBlue, is asking, um, what kind of food do you have on board? And so sometimes we might give a recommendation, but we've really left it up to the team to be spontaneous and creative. They've come up with a few hashtags. I've seen this one hashtag on the house a few times, and I like it because it's kind of clever and it shares the message that, hey, you don't have to pay for the snacks. Um, also with JetBlue, we've just recently started installing Wi-Fi on more of our aircraft. It was a long time coming. If any of you who are JetBlue customers know that we didn't have Wi-Fi until this year, so now that we have Wi-Fi, our customers are getting on board. They're so excited to finally be able to connect on a JetBlue flight, and they're tweeting us about it. Well, one of the, the members of the team decided to respond by asking people to send selfies. And it's been really awesome, because we've had a lot of very clever selfies. We've also had some people who really didn't want to play that game. <laughs> and, and then in the final example here, um, every once in a while, we get some really obscure requests and things that we have to turn to Google to figure out. So I'm just curious, in this audience, would any of you know what it would mean if somebody requested a Brohoof? I want to see a raise of hands if you know what a Brohoof is. <laughs> no one really knows. So maybe you know about bronies, or people who are fans of My Little Pony. <laughs> so there was a time where somebody asked us for a Brohoof, and no one knew what that meant. So we have to Google it. We find out a lot more than we actually wanted to know about what this is. <laughs> But we were also able to respond with a brohoof. There's actually an emoticon for a brohoof. <laughs> so how awesome is that response? And this is the kind of thing that our crew members are, are doing. And I mean, they could have just as easily responded to that, that question about a brohoof with a um, choose JetBlue next time. The person was actually flying Southwest and asking uh, JetBlue to send a brohoof. They figured we would know. So. There's a larger story behind this. If you ask me afterward, I can tell you. <laughs> but the point is that we actually really connect with these customers. We don't just give them a generic response. We don't just say, hey, thanks for flying JetBlue today. We actually figure out what the brohoof is and give them one. And it not only impresses them and makes them feel a little more connected to them because we're speaking to them in their language, but they're telling this story to their friends and to their own audience and community. Another interesting tweet that came up a while back was somebody who was glad they didn't get dysentery on a flight? I mean, really, how common is dysentery? Like, <laughs> why would they be thanking us for that? <laughs> I'm just curious, does anybody get the reference here? <laughs> yes, Oregon Trail. So to be honest with you, I had no idea what this was. But I wasn't, I mean, the person, it wasn't up to me to know what it was. We actually had somebody who was working at the time when Jason sent this tweet. And he had no idea what it meant either. But he at least knew enough to ask the, the group. He asked the rest of the team, why would he be thanking us that he didn't get dysentery? And luckily, we have someone on the team who was very familiar with Oregon Trail, the old video game, probably one of the original video games. And he responds with a, <laughs> with a reference <laughs> very much in line <laughs> to, that, <laughs> to, the, to the question, which was awesome. <laughs> And, and what's even better is that Jason responds in all caps. It was deserving of all caps. <laughs> I am genuinely impressed. <laughs> 
So my question is, I mean, really, with that original tweet, he didn't even give us an ad mention. He wasn't asking us anything directly. That was probably not necessarily need to respond to that, but how awesome is it that he got the response he got? And how much more likely will he be to feel an affinity for JetBlue and to tell that story? I, I think it was uh, something that got some shares, and I think that it's a story that people like to talk about. I mean, this actually happened almost two years ago, and we're still talking about it and making reference to the Oregon Trail tweet. So it's really about our network and using our internal resources. The social media team, like I said earlier, we're based in Salt Lake City, Utah, but uh, we are, if you look at JetBlue's route map, we're way out there in the non-populated area <laughs> where we don't have a whole lot of flights. But right now we fly to 86 cities. We have over 900 flights a day. And our social media team pretty much represents all of those flights and all of those cities. So we have to set up a very robust internal network so that we can get information to share with our customers when they ask. If we have somebody who's here in Orlando asking, what is going on with your bag drop counter? There's no one here. We're going to make sure that Orlando gets that message in real time and is able to address the problem on the spot. We have this worked out with a lot of, with a lot of our airports. We're able to give them real-time information. We're also able to get information back from the subject matter experts in real time. So even though our team is a customer support-based team and we're in Salt Lake City, if somebody tweets us that there is a typo on our website or maybe a question about a terms and conditions and a promo, we know the people and we have a good relationship with those people that we can actually get in touch with them and goes, get those things fixed right away. Um, the benefit to that is we're not only just fixing it for one person, we're fixing it for everyone. Because if somebody tells you that something's an issue, there's a good chance it's affecting a lot more than just that one person. Another example is um, Rachel who was flying with us a little while ago, and she left her passport in the seat back pocket of a flight that was going back from Austin to JFK. She flew to Austin, got out, realized that she had left her passport, and the flight was already en route back to JFK. So she emailed the team at JFK. We have a lost and found email address. She emailed that. Then she felt like, oh, I actually need to talk to somebody because this is kind of urgent. The flight might get there. Somebody might pick it up. I don't know what's going to happen to my passport. So the flight is in the air, and she tweets us this, and there was a lot more that happened in the meantime, but we had a lot of people on the trail ready to get her passport. We talked to people at the airports. Um, we actually had uh, the people at JFK involved. We had somebody at Austin involved. They were all talking to their people on the ground. They were ready when that flight landed to get the passport for her, and we were able to reunite it for her. So it's an example of how through social media, even though something comes up there, we execute on, a, on the ground. We involve the people who can actually make a difference because really for us, working, uh, my team works from home in Salt Lake City. I don't think they can actually get the passport out and hand it back to her, <laughs> but we do know the right people to talk to to make sure she was re reunited with her passport. And the one thing I want to uh, really point out about this is that some of you might know about Rachel. You might know that she has close to 50 million followers on Twitter. And the question is, would we go out of our way to help her get her passport because she's an influencer? The answer to that is no. We would do this for anyone. There are a lot of things we do for our customers that we would do it for anyone. Can we do it for everyone? Hopefully. But if we can't, we would do it for anyone that, that's in need. Of course, I talked about our organic content, about how we're spontaneous. We do have campaigns. We plan things. We work really closely with our brand and marketing team and also, like I said, with CorpCom. And we make sure that our marketing initiatives are completely familiar to our customer support agents. So last Valentine's Day, we made a bunch of virtual candy hearts that we were giving out to our customers as they tweeted us. It was kind of a surprise. We had probably 15 different designs so we could customize the responses and give them to people um, in a way that was appropriate. And in response to that, we had one customer who's a loyal customer. His name is Paul. And he made us a valentine. So we gave him a virtual candy heart. He gave us a virtual valentine. We were really impressed with that. And then we decided to take it one step further. So if you look in the lower right-hand corner of this slide, you'll see that there's a badge. So true blue badges are badges just like maybe Foursquare badges or badges, um, any kind of virtual badges. And our most loyal customers, if they're members of true blue, and if you fly, you can gain badges. And there are leaderboards, so you can see what's going on. Well, we decided to give back to Paul after he sent us the Valentine with a badge of his very own. So you can see that he created the PB&J logo, Paul Brown and J for JetBlue. 
and we put that on his very own custom badge. But what's awesome about this is that it wasn't just the social media team doing this. It was actually our graphic designers. They had to get involved uh, with our business partner who's in Poland that owns the, the loyalty tool. So suddenly, this amazing surprise and delight experience for our customer is so much more than just social. It's actually all of these people internally getting excited about it, our business partner getting excited about it, and being able to deliver a story that Paul has talked about, he's blogged about, he's shared. When you get your community engaged at that level, then they do your marketing for you. They're telling your story because of something that happened. And this was something that we turned around within one day. It all happened all on Valentine's Day something that didn't need a whole lot of lead time and approvals to do. So we have a lot of, Paul is one of many BFFs that we have. We have built up quite a good, um, uh, you can have more than one BFF, right? I hope so, because we have a lot. <laughs> um, another one we have, um, Jeff Cutler. Some of you might know him. I don't, maybe he's in here, I don't know. Um, so he tweets us a lot. And he's just one of many people. I just use him as an example because he sent us a box of chocolates, which was really nice. So what we're doing on social and by engaging our customers and talking to them is we're building up a bank of goodwill. And we're building that up so that because sometimes we actually have to cash in on that goodwill. We have to ask our customers sometimes to do things that are inconvenient. So Jeff was having an issue with his reservation. We were able to help him to a certain extent through a series of direct messages, but then we actually kind of came to the end of the road, and what he really needed, we couldn't do for him, and we had to have him call us. So it didn't feel to us like the ideal resolution to the situation, but we had built up enough goodwill with him through our engagement that he sent us a box of chocolates. And that's not the only thing we've received from our customers. We actually got um, a whole envelope full of Ben and Jerry's coupons one time, and we also got a whole box full of little blue ponies one time. Long story, again, I can tell you later if you want to hear the story. <laughs> so it's all about making these connections and really executed on what we're doing virtually uh, in a in a face-to-face -face way as well. So Gavin Donovan is another customer that we have become very good friends with. And he tweeted us in September of one year and asked if, when he traveled, we could play his theme song. He wanted entrance music when he arrived at the gate. And <laughs> he actually wanted the Hulk Hogan theme song. He's the one that suggested that Jason do the reenactment. Um, so we, we saw that, you know, it was kind of funny. Like, he didn't have a flight booked. We didn't know. You know, we were like, yeah, no promises. We'll see what we can do. Well, he tweeted us again in December and said, I'm flying next month, so January. He says, I hope you have my theme song ready. So we use the tools we have to look back at our conversation history and say, oh, that's right. He wanted the Hulk Hogan theme, so theme song. So we got hold of our airport team in Dallas, and we said, hey, you got to look out for Gavin when he's traveling. Make sure you play the theme song. So Ray, who's our manager in Dallas, is amazing. He goes above and beyond, makes a poster, and, <laughs> and plays Gavin's theme song. <laughs> so when Gavin arrived at the gate in Dallas, he has no idea that suddenly here's his music being played just like he requested four months before. And he, we, we didn't even know this at the time, but Gavin's also a social media guy. And he goes to conferences and he speaks and he shared his story. He's also blogged about it and it's something that, that keeps coming up. But not only that, he also has a relationship with Ray now and they tweet each other all the time. So there's all this fun stuff, but also airline travel is not fun. Flights get delayed, flights are diverted, flights are canceled. Sometimes you have to fly another airline, not JetBlue. And it's, it's not fun. We look out for these things, we look for our customers, we try to help them at the, at the opportunities where there's the greatest need. We look for opportunities to make their experience a little less painful. No, it doesn't mean that we can make the flight take off on time, we can't stop the weather, we can't uh, skip all the other planes that are in line for takeoff, but we can hopefully soften the experience and at least build that human connection that makes it a little bit easier for our customers. Our crew members are, like I said, manually looking at all of the mentions that come in. They're choosing based on wh where the greatest opportunities are to respond. And as you can see, if you look through JetBlue's responses, you'll see that everyone is different. Everyone has a little bit of a unique voice, but it's all the JetBlue voice. We feel like it's important to be consistent because what we're doing as the at JetBlue team is a reflection of our JetBlue team. 
the people that are on the ground, the people that are wearing the JetBlue uniform. For us, it's all in our voice, it's in our engagement, and it's in us looking out for those areas of greatest opportunity. And we, as you can see, have had some pretty good experiences. But again, what we're doing, what we're doing through Twitter is no different than what we're doing face-to-face -face as people. We're building relationships, we're sharing goodwill, and we're truly looking for opportunities to engage in a smart way.